All right, thanks for sticking around for the number one Cochrane Sports Showdown. I'm Rich Walsh in for Bob Pompiani. Tonight we have a lot to dive into, especially with the Steelers and their first preseason game. And we have the crew to break it all down from the Steelers, athlete, or Steelers beat writer from The Athletic, our Steelers insider, one of the best Steelers beat writers around, Mark Caboli. And then from the fan, we got two guys here, the Chris's, Chris Mack and Chris Mahler. And we're going to start with the Steelers, Mark. And I want to start with this first team offense. They went right down the field. Scored on their first drive. What was it? 10 plays, 83 yards. Um, Kenny Pickett looked in control, poised. Uh, what did you like about that drive? And are we getting too excited about the first drive of the first game of preseason? Of course we're getting too excited about the first <laughs> drive of the first preseason. Why not? They look good. Well, I'm not saying that it's not warranted in some way because we spent the past six months uh, telling everybody how great Kenny Pickett was, and all of a sudden you're going boom, 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 scoring. It could have been much worse. We know that. And I, there's not a th you probably couldn't have scripted it better, and I might make a pun out of scripted because those plays were obviously scripted by Matt Canada those first ten plays. But, I mean, it, it worked out as po best you can possibly do. I mean, Kenny was able to spread it around four different receivers. He was uh, making the right calls. He was, he was throwing to the right guys. He was... Um, leading the guys in the right direction. Uh, everything just worked absolutely perfectly. They got that good taste in their mouth. Get them out. I mean, I just don't see anything. If anybody can sit here and say one thing negative about that opening drive, you can't. No, and, and I mean, Grant, you, you can uh, look. We're Challenge all accepted. Hold on. No. Okay, hold on. Go ahead, Malsey. What, what's, what's your. Of course. No Carlton you. Davis, no Jamel Dean, no Vita Vea, no Shaq Barrett, that's no Devin White, no details. Levante David, so no that's, Winfield. That's what I was going to say. We can, we can argue about who it was against, but then Mitch Trubisky went in there against the same crap third team defense and looked awful. So. I mean, I do give Kenny Pickett some points for going out there, being efficient, hitting pick, Pickens in stride. Pickett to Pickens, I, I, it's one play. And like we talked about, it's against the defense that is nowhere near. That is a USFL defense, if that. Um, but I like he hit Pickens in stride. Pickens made a move. They spread the ball around. Fryermuth gets involved. Deontay Johnson. That's what I think you want to see from that offense this year, spread the ball around. Pickin, pick it, pardon me, be efficient, and that's what they got. Mahler's going to get that shirt, pick it to Pickens. Sure, yeah, yeah if you right want there. Me to, yeah, I'm the only person in town who's going to resolve not to confuse those two yeah, thank and, you. and get it right every time. Um, other than me pointing out that it was against the third team defense or against a lot of the first team defense not there, you know, that was great. I don't know how you could find anything negative about it. I thought for me it was an intangible quality pick it showed. We know last year they had the reins on them so tight. It was all about last year what he didn't do when they were trying to grade him positively. Oh, he didn't turn the ball over. It was never about what he did. Oh, he marched him right down the field. Other than in these end-of-game situations, I got the general vibe, like right from his first pass, where he had to quickly look off a defender and then hit that nice little eight-yarder to Johnson that he turned up field. It reminded me of, as you saw Roethlisberger get more and more into his career, you expected him in his limited preseason action to dictate terms, to like be the best player in the field. And Kenny looked like it. He looked like a guy completely in command. I think the Pickens play, I'm not just going to undersell it because it was against, you know, scrub corners. Why? It's him running an in route, something other than a go. And Kenny putting the ball, even though it was scrub corners, right they were where all over be. him. They were yeah. draped on him. There's a window about, you know, the size of my hands right here to throw that football, and the ball was there. That, that those was, are all good things. That was, you know, if you look at all those throws he had, they were right where they were the supposed third and, to be. The third the and ten one to Johnson on the sideline. That's a ball yes. that's a – you got to have confidence to roll yes. right and throw that and ball I in there. I think this was by design to come him out, have him come out and throw the ball six or seven times, not to only prove to himself, but maybe prove to everybody in the world that, hey, Kenny Pickett might be a little bit different this year. And I he, think looked he, he, he looked confident. different. And that pick, he and throw, that pick and throw again, middle of the field. Not necessarily deep middle, but middle of the field, like you said. On a third down, right? Wh which is, how many times did we see that? You have to year? know, you <laughs> have to be yeah. very confident with where the ball's going. You have to have your footwork on point, and you have to let that thing go and, like, really drive it in there, even against third team players, for that to work. I think that's no. It's one he, series, yeah. but it is notable. But after he got flushed out of the pocket and hit on that previous play where Chooks let the guy throw, he comes back and makes that big play, too. I mean, what if it's the flip side, Rich? You know, how about if he would come out and stunk up like Baker? Oh, they great, would probably great. get another series, and then they would but we would have been freaking out. Yeah. But we would yeah. have been freaking out about it on the other side. All this intangible stuff, all this off season. He was so in the playbook, and he owns it now. We would have all said, "Boy, that looks pretty hollow." 
So I have to give him props when he came out and looked like the player they believe he can be. All right, we're all confident in Kenny Pickett right now because what we saw and what we see in Epic Camp. Are we confident, Chris, in Matt Canada? Because he pointed out today it was lack of execution basically last year. I'm not yet confident in him, although, boy, his offense does look a lot different when the guys are making the reads and making the throws properly, admittedly against bad defenders or less than stellar defenders. But I think what's most encouraging about him is, and again, I have to keep putting this caveat in, you're playing against second, third, fourth teamers, guys who won't be in the NFL, so there's probably not a lot of eye discipline, there's not a lot of gap discipline. When you see those jet sweeps hitting, suddenly Calvin Austin looks like a toy in Matt Canada's toolbox here that he'll like to uh, utilize. I mean, I don't... He, he needs to earn, like, kind of the benefit of the doubt. He's got one truly great year in his entire career, and it happened to be at Pitt where they ran mostly a power running game. But it looks a little better when guys are making the plays properly. And, and here's what I'll say. You talk about Calvin Austin. Again, Pickens in the middle of the field. That's stuff that w didn't work last year. If, if he does that stuff, if that stuff gets dialed up properly, I'll feel better about Canada as things move along. If he starts to go back into this like he did last week at camp with Kendrick Green he needs kicking out and, and that kind of – I mean, that's nonsense. Mark said it earlier, though. He scripted that, and it's all – every coach has their best plays True. ready for the script. He does need to in-game sequence that's and react I was react just going to say, that's the next step for Canada. What happens if – they go three and out on that series, mm -hmm. and now you're running on, on, on the quick here. I mean, you have to get those plays in six, seven, eight seconds into the headphones, hit guys out, out there. So that's the next step for him, having a basic, you know, a good series of calls when things aren't working, when the running game's not He's going to have a feel just the, like Pickett yeah, does. He's like, going to, you know, it's just as much as a coordinator to get into a groove as a quarterback or an offense. And I don't know if we've really seen that from Canada over his career. Well, two players I want to point out. You brought up the one, Chris, uh, is Calvin Austin. I mean, I talked to Najee Harris after the game in, in Florida, and he basically made it a point to say Calvin Austin is going to be a big part of this offense. Did you, did you like what you saw from him? I mean, he, he played against the four teamers out right. there, but we saw speed. And we saw him make a great touchdown catch. If, if Pickett's going to hit him the way Rudolph did on that one, and Mason Rudolph, for whatever reason, has like one decent deep ball in him every single preseason game he's ever played decent. in. Um, and so if, if Pickett hits him like Rudolph did there on that one, if he can be that deep threat down the field as well as stretch the field width-wise like Malsey was talking about, then yes. I think Calvin Austin is a weapon. They've got um, more weapons than an offense that looked as bad as it did at times last year more than you realize. And that, that's the other thing. Can Canada manage these weapons properly when I think Mike Tomlin would prefer they just kind of lean on Najee and run mm. more often than not? I'm gonna, I think a big storyline is going to be what, if Mike Tomlin sees them in whatever other preseason mm -hmm. action they get, continue to look pretty explosive. As much, Listen, the guy loves defense, but I do get the sense that last year he was being overly conservative because he maybe rightly thought he had to be. I think if Kenny and those guys earn his trust, he will open it up. I'll tell you what with Calvin Austin, we, you know, I want to get ahead of ourselves. No, no less than Sauce Gardner said that was the toughest cover I ever had in college. Probably because if you watch that replay, Rudolph throws the ball. He hasn't even gotten to the defender yet. Mm -hmm. Ball comes down. He's four yards past the defender. Cornerbacks don't like it when you can do that to them. That's uh, a scary you know, factor. It's, it's more than just one play, too. He did that in camp last year before he got hurt. He did it all through camp now, then he put it into the first game. And, and when he beats somebody down there, there's no way that safety's getting over to be able to cover him. And the jet sweeps, we rip on them. When they're timed up perfectly like they are, and that's where I've seen the difference of they're just right, they're just a click quicker this year. Yep. They're hard to beat. All right, before we go to break, I want to bring up to our resident offensive line expert, Broderick Jones. Did you like what you saw? Because when I talked to him after the game, he said he thought he did some good things, but he had a couple plays like he wanted to have I he played 50 snaps, back. right? 40 some 60. Miles. 60 I think he, 50, or no, 40, 40, 49 40, out of the yeah. 60 snaps. Well, they that's took. perfect yeah. for him. Get out because he has obviously had, didn't have any snaps of his career. Throw him out there, give him a heavy workload, then be able to work off of that. Saying that you're going to throw him in there this week against the Bills? That just seems like crazy to talk to me. I mean, I think they're pretty much set with their offensive line. Now, like I keep saying, that might not be where they eventually go, but uh, I think Broderick Jones, he allowed a sack, right? Yeah. I think eventually they'll get to him, but it's not going to be right away. Yeah, and I think the, the bigger thing is, did Dan Moore Jr. do anything that made you shake your head or wonder if he, he can start over Broderick Jones? For the time being, Chooks at least. was the tackle that looked bad because he yeah. got beat on the one play where Pickett had to throw it into the ground, basically. I will say, Broderick Jones, and everybody knows I wanted them to draft him, gave it an A+. 
Terrible jersey fit. What are we doing there? <laughs> I barely, barely get all the, the numbers yeah. in the big yellow baggy yeah, T-shirt. Yeah, yeah, we got to get a better jersey. That's the DeAndre Hopkins of offensive linemen jersey fits. There. I still think he's going to be the starter early in the season. I would like to see him be game. the starter and have I, Dan Moore knock Chooks yeah. out. I know that you can't Again, go and yeah. just immediately slot somebody at the opposite tackle. There's they all did the that two years ago with, with Banner. Well, I they mean, Chooks from one side. Right. To the other. I know, and then That's Dan right. Moore was supposed to be a right yes. tackle, became a left tackle. I think he has more to offer them than Chooks, and I just don't think they agree with that. All right, Maybe we got to take a break. Don't want him at right tackle. We got to take a break. We got more Steelers talk coming up next, so stay right there. Number one Cochrane Sports Showdown is brought to you by Number One Cochrane. Go one better. 